I'm Elizabeth, a literary princess. If you are new here, welcome. I am a six-year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read. So um, it's been a while since I uploaded. Usually I upload twice a week. Um, there were no videos last week. And that is because my husband and I were in a rather nasty car crash. We are both completely fine. We had minor injuries only, thank God. The, the car is totaled. As a result, I was not feeling well enough to film. I did try filming a little bit later last week, um, but I just was still really out of it and it came out bad. So this is my currently reading take two. So yes, today we're doing a currently reading. I am currently reading three books. Let's jump in. So the first one that I'm reading is a work of nonfiction that I recently bought. It hasn't even been in a haul yet because I have not filmed my haul for April to June. And this is, it's so good. This is Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. Um, it was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. It's a biography of Sylvia Plath. It is chunky, so chunky. Oh my God. But it's so, so good. Heather Clark is an amazing writer and she is just bringing Plath absolutely to life and Ted Hughes as well. I was recently introduced to Ted Hughes at the point I'm at. I am... 464 pages into this 1,118 page book. That's including the notes. <laughs> so I'm not quite halfway, but I'm getting there. This is something I'm gonna be reading for a while, I think. Um, even though it moves very quickly, like it's, so um, there's a quote here that says, a majestic tone with the narrative propulsion of a thriller. And it really does, like it reads so well. Like I'm as engaged in this as I am with a work of fiction, but it is dense. There's a lot of discussion of her poetry, analyzing it. So it is taking me longer to read than say a novel of the same length might. But I am adoring it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up knocking Sister Novelists by Devani Lucer out of the top spot for my best book of the year, which I can't believe because Sister Novelists was amazing, but this is this is also really amazing. <laughs> and it's gonna be very, It's I'm pretty sure those will be the top two of the year. And it's really shocking that they'll both be nonfiction. That does not usually happen. But yeah, if you're into biographies, highly recommend this. If you're into Sylvia Plath, highly recommend. It's fantastic. Next up, we have a work of fiction. This is the very shiny um, Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. So I got this out of my public library because I wanted to start watching the AMC show. Um, I initially meant to Wa like read it first and then watch it but it ended up happening that we are now watching it as I am reading it and it's good so far like it it's a good book this is probably blasphemous or something I actually like the show better sorry sorry I, but I just find what the show is doing more interesting than what the novel is doing. So this is the story of um, the vampire Louis um, de Pointe du Lac or something French. <laughs> um, and he is turned into a vampire in the 1790s by Lestat. And yeah, this is just his life as a vampire. And he, it is framed as him giving an interview in the 1970s to a character who is only known as the boy. And um, the boy has a tape recorder and is recording it all. So it's a really interesting setup. It's a setup that I actually think works better on screen than it does in print. <sighs> Sorry. I like the show better <laughs> but it is a good book it's very well written um the character of Claudia so far is my favorite both
both in the book and the show. She's great in the show too. But I, she's the character in the book that I find the most interesting. So I am liking this. I am about halfway through. I am on page 160 out of like 340. So about halfway through. Should be finishing it pretty soon. Um, I think me and my husband are about halfway through the first season of the show as well. So yeah, I'm liking it. I just, and this like, I never say this, but I think the show is better. And then finally, we actually have another work of nonfiction. This is for my dissertation. It is an autobiography by Anthony Trollope. So I am writing a chapter on the autobiography of Margaret Oliphant. She actually directly references Trollope's autobiography multiple times. So I decided I am going to read this and see if I can use it. And oh, can I use it? This is so helpful. <laughs> um, I'm also very surprised how readable it is um, because I don't know, sometimes 19th century nonfiction is not, not readable. <laughs> but this is actually really quite easy to read. Um, I am about 224 pages into the it's like just under 400 pages with notes. So again, like halfway through-ish, a little bit more than halfway through. I'm really liking it. I was surprised at how much I like it. I like Trollope's narrative voice. I find the way that he talks about his novels really interesting. He talks about his characters as if they're real people, as if they're his friends. And that's actually what Margaret Oliphant is talking about in her autobiography, because she's like, well, I don't do that. I can't do that. Like, that's not how I feel about them. And um, yeah, it's really interesting um, to see the different ways that authors present themselves. Um, largely, I think, to do with gender and the various gender roles that are expected to be played. But anyway, that's, I'll probably have a whole video on my dissertation and I'll talk more about that there. But yeah, th this is really enjoyable. I'm having such a good time. So if you are into Victorians, if you love Trollope, highly recommend reading this. And that is what I am currently reading. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think? What are you currently reading? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.